they're all reasonably easy to pick up. Uh, I had some trouble with a few of them, but uh, for the most part, you shouldn't have any trouble uh, getting what you need. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be using, uh, probably the largest thing, is this uh, ceramic bowl pot vessel thing. Um, Daniel would have actually used a uh, copper vessel, not unlike that, uh, but made entirely of copper. Uh, ceramic will work just as well. It's a glazed ceramic, so um, there's no uh, no big worry there. Um, but it's best to use glass, plastic, uh, but preferably glass. Um, going inside that, and what will actually be holding the um, zinc sulfate is uh, this contraption here, which I actually had to made make rather. Um, Daniel described what he used in the vessel, uh, the larger copper vessel, as a earthenware jar. Uh, and basically the uh, point of using an earthenware jar is that it's uh, free, or it, it leaves room, if unglazed, leaves uh, room for ions to pass through from sulfate to sulfate. Uh, however, in, in this case, uh, a paper tube will do just as well. The problem, of course, is that you somehow have to seal off the bottom so that uh, the sulfates don't mix while they're in the, in the vessel. I've read that you can do um, plaster of Paris. I didn't have that on hand, but what I did have is um, paraffin wax, which is used for a number of different things, often for sealing um, jars of jam and that sort of thing. So all I did was melted, melt um, some paraffin wax, poured it in a bowl, and then stood the uh, toilet paper roll upright in it. And you can see that it actually uh, completely sealed it off so that nothing is going to get in there and has a fair bit of weight so it'll sink right to the bottom of the uh, of the vessel. Um, for the copper sulfate, I um, learned that you can get a product uh, at pet stores called Copper Safe, which is actually used to treat uh, fish parasites in fish tanks. Uh, it's called Copper Safe, and uh, it's about eight bucks or so, uh, and that's just straight up copper sulfate. So that's what I'll be using for that. Uh, as far as the copper electrode goes, I mean anything copper will work. I picked up just an elbow from uh, Canadian Tire for copper plumbing uh, for about 96 cents. Um, as far as the zinc uh, side of things go, uh, zinc sulfate is preferable. So I have, of course, a jar of zinc sulfate here obtained through the Dalhousie Chemistry Department, uh, kindly provided to me. Uh, so that'll obviously have to be mixed with water, um, and that's what I'll use for the zinc sulfate. And uh, <coughs> for the zinc electrode, a uh, zinc-coated screw. Now, uh, to actually hook up to a light bulb and a multimeter, I will be using uh, jumper cables. Uh, I only needed about four, but uh, I got forced into buying ten from Radio Shack, but that's okay. They only cost about six bucks. Uh, and finally, I have in here a very little light bulb. Uh, I'm sure things much weaker than this battery will be able to, uh, to light it up, but it's kind of nice to see um, something actually get lit up by your hard work and experimentation. So <laughs> that's what I'll be using. Um, other than that, I'll be using a multimeter just to uh, read the output output current from this battery. Uh, I don't have it on me right now, uh, but you know what it looks like. Okay, so here's the uh, currently finished um, product, uh, the Daniel cell battery, a very crude imitation, but uh, should work just the same. Um, I actually scrapped the original uh, idea I had for the main vessel, the ceramic pot. Uh, in favor of something that's taller and narrower, uh, my fear was that I didn't have a whole lot of sulfate. As you can see, um, the bottle is pretty small, and I had to fill a, a fairly big space. In retrospect, it was a really bad idea to even think about using something this big. Uh, it should have been just a very narrow, uh, narrow vessel, um, but I didn't have a whole lot of a uh, lot of chance to do that. Um, so I scrapped it in favor of this. So you can see the uh, the, the copper sulfate all at the bottom here, the blue. Um, I actually mixed it with water, which, according to Daniel, is all right. Uh, he said a strong solution, so there's, um, I mean, a lot more uh, of this stuff than there is water. Uh, but I, I fear that I should have done it differently. Uh, and, of course, you can see the uh, paper tube in there, which I'm actually uh, starting to worry about because you can see the uh, zinc sulfate is kind of starting to seep through on the seams, uh, which could be ruining some of this experiment. Um, the yellow cable, of course, is attached to my uh, uh, zinc-coated nail, which is inside the tube in the zinc sulfate, and the red cable is attached to my uh, piece of copper plumbing, which is suspended in the zinc sulfate. Uh, and you can kind of see the base of wax inside the, uh, the vessel there on the bottom of my tube. 
Uh, both of the cables actually come out and connect to my little light bulb. Uh, and as you can probably see, it's not lit up. <laughs> um, which is disappointing, uh, but I'm going to give it some time. I'm also going to uh, hook it up to the multimeter and see what we get. Um, the lamp I bought is actually uh, 1.5 volts, so if this thing's putting out 1.49 volts, it's possible that uh, it's just shy of powering it. I uh, might have to leave it a bit longer, uh, but I guess we'll see once the multimeter comes in. We're going to hook it up and, uh, and see what we get. The light bulb never lit up, but uh, maybe we'll get some all right results with the multimeter. Here's my brand new multimeter. We'll set it to volt over 20. And it looks like we are getting between 74 and 0.74 and 0.75 of a volt, which isn't very much. Uh, you can see too, if I lift the galvanized screw out of the water, it goes right down to zero. Um, so we are getting a current. Uh, it's not that much. Uh, we've even gotten more out of a couple coins in Coca-Cola and class, uh, which really is kind of disappointing. <laughs> I hoped it would be more. Um, but that's the way it goes, I guess. So I just finished up a few few uh, little tests here with the other uh, the other things that I said I was going to try out um, in the vessel. And surprisingly what I found is that uh, the closest I came to recreating the 0 0.74, 0 0.75 that I got with the galvanized screw was actually with... Um, I get too much water on my hands. Uh, a little block of staples. Uh, they actually got it up to about 0.74 or 0.71 I should say, which was pretty impressive. Um, the finishing nail only got about 0.11 of a volt, uh, and of course some of the coated screws uh, didn't even really get anything. There was a, there was a large impedance there. Um, now one thing I have noticed after having um, my original screw immersed in the uh, zinc sulfate for probably two, three hours or so, uh, is that it's changed color. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you can see up here uh, it's kind of nice and shiny, and that's how it was. And it's actually gotten significantly blacker and darker, and overall just more sinister looking uh, the further down the screw you go, which I found really interesting. Uh, but it seems that uh, that this here, the uh, zinc-coated screw, seems to work the best, uh, but it's still not enough to light my little light bulb. So I've kind of been looking at, uh, at the design of it, of, of what I made, uh, and there's a few things I've kind of come to the conclusion on um, as to why I might have had uh, such a, a poor uh, output of electricity from it. Uh, I think A, I should have had a more concentrated um, solution of copper sulfate. I did have to mix it with water because I didn't purchase enough, uh, enough copper sulfate. Uh, probably would have been more beneficial to actually get powdered um, copper sulfate as opposed to liquid, uh, despite the fact that it, it was a, a real copper sulfate that I purchased. Uh, it was still a solution because it was mixed with water. Um, so maybe next time actually find copper sulfate in a powder form. Uh, and the other thing as well is that having left it this long, uh, I think there's a possibility that there is a bit of mixing between the uh, the two solutions between or going through the uh, paper tube just because it is starting to kind of seep through because uh, it's just cardboard. Uh, one interesting thing I did find though is that I took out the copper um, tube that I was using and it does look a lot different than it did before. I doubt you'll be able to see it, but you can kind of see how on this end uh, it's really shiny and it has this funny sort of copper coating over it on this side. Uh, but that's interesting because that's actually what uh, John Daniel noticed when he first made his battery. Normally there's a uh, deposit of uh, hydrogen bubbles on this electrode, uh, which really impedes the flow of electricity. Uh, what he noticed was that using a copper vessel, it actually left uh, that sort of exactly that coating uh, inside the uh, copper vessel that he was using, and he he discovered that it's actually that that um, having it having it um, deposited on something else uh, is what stops the um, buildup of hydrogen bubbles. So that is quite interesting. Uh, 